If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. We're going to go ahead and try to draw a picture of the spherical shell that's described in the question. So here we have the spherical shell. It has an inner radius that we've marked R1 and an outer radius marked R2. What we need to consider is an expression for the amount of charge that would be present in a very thin shell. Now, because that shell is very thin, we could call its thickness dr. And the amount of charge present in that thin shell would be dq. We're using the differential notation because these are very tiny quantities. Now, the amount of charge in that thin shell would be the charge per unit volume, which the question denotes as rho, multiplied by the actual volume of that shell. It's a very thin shell again, so we'll use the notation dv. We're next going to consider an expression for this dv term. We know in general terms that a volume is equal to an area multiplied by a thickness or a height, essentially. And in this case, the thickness is this very small differential length here. So we can replace this dv with an area multiplied by that differential length, dr. We'll next remember that we are dealing with spherical shells. And of course, the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So we can replace the area a with 4 pi r squared. So we have an expression for the amount of charge present in a very thin shell. What we have is not just a very thin shell, but actually a much thicker shell, whose thickness is denoted in the picture by this. So what we have to do is take a series of these very thin shells, whose charge we just derived, and add them all together. In fact, technically, we have to take an infinite series of those thin shells and add together all their charges. So in calculus terms, what we have to do is integrate both sides of this equation, and that's going to take a differential amount of charge up to the full charge of this spherical shell. Now, the limits of integration will simply be our lower limit, which will be beginning right here on the inside surface of the shell, and we're going to integrate all the way out to the outside surface of the shell which of course is denoted by r2. So we'll add those limits of integration to our integral. Now the left-hand integral of course will just become q, the total charge within this spherical shell. We might want to remind ourselves that rho was given to us as b divided by r, so we'll make a substitution before integrating the right side. We could see then that a factor of r cancels from the denominator and numerator. We will recall that b and 4 pi are constants, so those can be removed to the outside of the integral. We can now integrate the term r, which will of course become r squared over 2. We'll reduce the 4 over 2. Finally, we'll plug in the upper limit followed by the lower limit. And then all we have to do at this point is plug in the known values. Note that b was given in a non-standard unit of microcoulomb, so we'll have to multiply it by 10 to the minus 6. Also, the radii were given in centimeters, so we'll have to multiply those by 10 to the minus 2. And when you calculate that, you should get a value of approximately 3.8 times 10 to the minus 8th coulombs. And that is indeed the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. Also, you're welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.